My name is Sarah Bruett. I am with uh, FAST Enterprises, obviously, and have been on the recruiting team and at FAST for a little over nine years now. So definitely have a lot of experience with uh, on-campus recruiting and then, of course, LinkedIn as well. And LinkedIn is one of our um, primary ways that we can find passive candidates and it's a, a job uh, or a candidate database that we really enjoy using. So today we will cover some LinkedIn tips and, and recommendations from a recruiter's perspective. So first I wanted to share a little bit of information about FAST so you have some understanding of where it is that I'm coming from, what we're doing. Um, we are a software development and IT consulting company. We work with government agencies all across the United States and internationally as well. And we're working with them in three different areas of government. Um, tax, unemployment insurance, and then motor vehicle and driver services. So it's very much behind the scenes aspect of government. It's um, not impacting you directly, uh, but we do impact over half the United States population indirectly because as you can see on our map, we do have a, a very large portion of the United States as clients. Um, the work that we do um, is a consulting and, and development together. The software products that we have are commercial off the shelf. Uh, so we're not developing brand new software systems from the ground up. Instead, we're using a system that we know will work and we can just configure it to meet the client's specific needs. So no need to start over, reinvent the wheel. We know we have a system that will work. Um, taxes are taxes, whether they're, they're taxes in Malaysia or, or taxes in North Dakota. You're really taking that money in, you're processing it, you're managing it, you're maintaining it. Um, but obviously there are certain requirements that need to have, it, have be in place and differences from one client to another. And that's really where our consulting comes in. So as I mentioned before, the work we do is a mix between that consulting and that development. Um, these are not great fits, uh, or these roles are not a great fit for people who are looking just for a purely development or software role because we're not, again, building software systems from the ground up. Instead, these are a really great fit for people who like the uh, problem solving, like communicating, and then like to do that programming and development as well. It's a, a great variety and it's a great mix for people who don't want to just get stuck into one area. The system that we have is written in visualbasic.net uh, with most of our clients using SQL Server for databases. So as far as candidates go, we do look for candidates with some object-oriented programming experience. SQL database experience is a nice added bonus as well. And then obviously strong communication skills to work directly with our clients. And then additionally, as you can see our map here, we have locations everywhere. And since we do consulting, our projects eventually come to an end and we don't need people to stay on projects forever. So we do look for people who are open to relocating every two to three years on average. Um, sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little less, uh, but the reason we relocate is because projects come to an end and we don't need 50 people on a project that's in maintenance phase. So we'll pull those people and put them on new projects. Um, or new projects get started and we can't staff them with just brand new employees. So we will pull people from existing projects to get that started. So again, a great fit for people who like that adventure, um, like that variety, like the idea of being able to work with different clients, um, communicate, problem solve. Um, we are uh, ranked as a top place to work. So I highly encourage you to check us out on Glassdoor, check out our website. And at the end here, I will um, include some links on how to find us on social media and our website. But if you're interested, um, please feel free to apply online or ask me any questions. Okay, so moving into LinkedIn, there are two areas that we're going to cover. The first is going to be on actually building your LinkedIn profile, so getting your profile set up and ready to go. And then the second is actually how to use LinkedIn and, and some LinkedIn etiquette. So building your profile. First things first is your profile picture. Um, you wanna make sure that keeps keeping it professional. These aren't Facebook profile pictures, so it shouldn't be you with a bunch of friends or you and your dog or out hiking. Um, I mean, hiking, I guess, if that's the job path that you're looking for, but ideally you wanna keep it um, professional, like the photo on the far right of somebody in a suit with a, a neutral background. Um, try to not have any selfies or just any side shots, but again, forward-facing professional shots. The only thing worse than having a bad photo is not having a photo at all. Uh, there are a lot of fake LinkedIn profiles out there. I know I will get a lot of invitations from coworkers. <laughs> I know the name. I see that they work at FAST. 
but I've already connected with them and there is no picture. So I'm obviously not going to connect with them. And that's kind of where as recruiters, our mind goes when there is not a photo is that we're thinking that it's either not a real account or this person did not put the time and effort into actually setting up their profile. Um, so make sure that you do have that profile picture. Um, you are 14 times more likely to get views with it than without. And then, um, you know, once things go back to normal and we have career fairs again, maybe we will this fall, who knows, but a lot of times career fairs, um, your career services will provide professional headshots. So take advantage of that. In the meantime, if you don't have that opportunity, put, you know, dress from the waist up professionally and have a family member or a roommate take a picture of you along um, just a plain neutral colored wall. Okay, so your headline. This is the first thing that a recruiter um, or really anybody looking at your profile is going to see. And you only have a few seconds to grab that recruiter's attention and this is a really great way to do it. Um, you wanna make it sure that it does grab their attention and it's enticing enough for them to look at your profile a little bit further. So a couple things to keep in mind when you are putting this together is you do wanna be aspirational. Uh, so if you put recent graduate, is your headline, you're lumped in with 3 million other people that are identifying as a recent graduate. So it doesn't really help you to stand out. Instead of focusing on what you've just achieved, focus on what you want to achieve. Um, you know, what do you aspire to do in your dream job? Another thing to do is to show your excitement. Uh, excitement is contagious. We all know that, um, or have sat into that lecture where a really monotone professor or lecturer has just droned on and on and it's just been so boring and then we've had that great professor who is really engaging and you want to listen to it. You know, excitement is contagious. So really show why you're there um, and make and recruiters want to listen to you. And then you'll also want to make sure that you're using um, keywords. Um, by using keywords like motivated or passionate or exceptional, those aren't keywords. Those are just padding your headline and giving adjectives that a recruiter isn't going to search for. I'm not gonna search for somebody who's passionate. We can all put that we're passionate, we're motivated, but that, 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 those aren't really skills. Those aren't really keywords that I can search for. Instead, um, make sure that you're thinking of what words might recruiters be searching for and putting those in as keywords. Okay, so moving on to your summary. Um, some people include summaries on their resume. I don't necessarily encourage people to do it on their resume because it takes up a lot of really precious space in your resume, but on LinkedIn, you, you have this room and this is just a really quick um, snapshot of who you are. And you'll, you can think about a summary as really the first few paragraphs of your best written cover letter. Um, you wanna be concise about your experiences, your qualifications, the goals that you have. Um, and if you can, really try to come up with a compelling narrative that's kind of weaved throughout your entire summary and your profile. So I have a couple of um, examples that I'm going to include um, throughout here, but first off, we will talk about, talk about your value, be authentic, and then tell a story. But I, they're a little bit longer summaries, so I'm gonna put those up just so you can read them. Um, as far as talk about your value, describe what motivates you. Um, what have you done? Uh, what are you skilled at? I think this is what people most often think about with a cover letter or a summary is you, you know, what, what are your qualifications? Um, with talking about your value, you want to be really clear and confident. Uh, you might not feel all that confident in the skills that you've gotten so far, but at least let that confidence show out within your writing. Um, and, and you're the only one that has to know that you're not completely confident in that, but you have the skill and, and to be at least confident with writing that down. Um, really think about what your qualifications are and what you want to achieve. You also want to be authentic. Um, keep your sentences in your summary short and conversational. If you drone on and on and on and start listing things, it's, it's just too much. Or if you try to just go over the top, it's not genuine. So really focus on who you are and help people understand why you are the right or, or maybe you're the wrong fit for that role, but just be authentic with what you're actually doing. Um, you also wanna tell a story. Uh, this, I like reading a story. I, I, that captures my interest, that, that appeals to me. So if I can um, read a story and, and be drawn into that person, that really helps me. So you can use keywords and phrases that uh, recruiters might search for. Um, you can also go with terms that are well known. 
Um, but make it, a, a, you know, you can feel free to add a couple personal items in there and just make that story. Um, so for these examples, the first one I showed was just a little bit more of that personal story. And then the second one is a little bit more of a short um, qualification simple summary. And then as far as your experiences go, this is really going to be copied over from your resume for the most part. Uh, you, one difference is that your resume, really your paper resume, should really only be limited to one page. LinkedIn, you have a lot more space. There is a time that I will stop scrolling. I've seen those profiles that are just far too long and I'm not going to get through the whole LinkedIn profile. But you have a lot more flexibility on LinkedIn than you do your paper ones. But um, which allows you to, your overview, it allows you to put kind of a little summary, that overview of the job that you did and your role. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about the company. A lot of times in a resume, I see the company and I don't know what they do. Um, on LinkedIn, it, this overview allows you to just write a little quick overview on the company, the role that you did. And then outside of that, it's going to look just like your resume does. So, um, you know, as you're updating your resume, you should be updating your LinkedIn profile as well. You're going to use those action verbs. Um, you're going to make your bullet points and then remember not to overdo it and you don't need to overlap a lot of the experiences from one job to another if you've done the same type of work. Um, but again, it's going to be a lot like your resume. So moving on to some tips and etiquette, so just kind of how to use LinkedIn and some etiquette for it. Uh, for your profile, uh, I talked a lot about keywords so far, and I've mentioned briefly about um, really avoiding those padded adjectives, and, and those are buzzwords. Uh, again, just it, calling yourself creative or motivated, responsible, a code ninja, passionate, those aren't things that we're searching for. Keywords are going to be more skill-based. Um, also take this opportunity to view other people's profiles. You're gonna, you can pull inspiration. By no means am I saying go to one person and copy everything that they've done, but instead um, pull inspiration from other people to see like, oh, I really like that they included that experience. I also have a similar one, I can include that. Um, so make sure that you're looking around. Uh, don't write in third person. Third person is if I said Sarah is a hard worker, it just can come off as pretentious. And so you just wanna make sure that you're writing in, um, uh, not in third person. Uh, include your contact information. It seems obvious, but it's <laughs> not on a lot of profiles. You're, you're doing all this, you're updating your profile, make sure that recruiters can see you. And then you can also customize your URL. So you can also um, include this link, sorry, on your resume. So it's just a nice, easy, concise. And to do that, you would just go into this, your profile um, up in the right-hand corner, edit, uh, edit public profile and URL, and you can just change it to whatever you'd like it to be. Okay, so as far as recruiters go, we use the database to search and it's a huge um, benefit. We find um, you know, anywhere from five to 15 candidates every year that are just passive candidates that we can, can bring on to FAST. Um, so you know, what better way to uh, get a job than having a recruiter actually reach out to you to let you know that they're interested. So, what we'll search for is location. You can upload um, where lo what locations you're willing to go to. We obviously want people who are willing to go nationwide. Um, graduation dates, we want to know when you're graduating. Um, if your graduation date was pushed back and we contact you for a full time, it doesn't look that great because you didn't update your profile. Um, so you know we know that that can change your, your graduation dates, so keeping that up to date. Another thing that can change is your major and minor. Keep those up to date because we're absolutely going to search by major to see um, what uh, if you're a good fit for FAST. Uh, work volunteer experiences, as I mentioned before, have everything that you have in your resume and then some if you want as well. Uh, make sure that we can see that you have done some work. Skills. Um, this could be technical. This could be a certain software or certification or equipment that you know. Um, don't just assume that a recruiter knows just because you're a computer science. Uh, some students will say, well, obviously I know how to program, but I don't know what languages you know. So make sure that you are including those. Uh, foreign languages, some jobs require certain language skills. We have a, a project in Puerto Rico, and maybe we're looking for somebody who is Spanish speaking, and, and we'll search for that um, in, the, this, um, in our search functions. Uh, on LinkedIn, you do want to uh, be proactive with how you're using it. So make sure that you are indicating that you're open to new opportunities. That's going to be in your profile. You can see here there's a toggle switch to say on or off. 
that um, if you're open to new opportunities, you will show first. Um, and we know that you're more, you are more likely to contact us and reach out to us if you say that you are open. And you can also see on this page that there are places for you to update your status of where you're at in your search, to update your locations, to say if you're looking for full time, are you open to working remotely? Um, you can up, you know, update all of that in this profile. You should also become a groupie. Um, follow companies that you're interested in, join different organizations um, and groups that are relevant to your interests and the industry that you want to work in. And don't just join them, but actually be active in them um, and, and con share content on them, comment on content, um, and, and add value to it. You should also build your network. But 80% of job openings are never advertised. So, uh, <laughs> You want to build your network. You want to start to know people. You want to start to um, contact them. And again, it's not enough just to just have LinkedIn and have a thousand connections, first connections on LinkedIn. You do want to make them um, a value. So right now as a college student, that is a little bit harder, especially if you're a freshman or sophomore, because you haven't had as big of a, uh, a network to pull from. But as you get older, that network will increase. Right now, you know, focus on professors, um, classmates, friends, family, high school friends and family, if you've worked in high school, um, your boss, your coworkers, as you have internships, that's a really another great bubble to, to start to connect with. Um, as you meet people in professional organizations um, or events, conferences, you can really start to connect it. So uh, once you get about over 50 connections, uh, you can really start to utilize your network and it'll really open up a lot more opportunities for you. But please don't just spam people to build your network because uh, I can easily just say, you know, I don't know this person. Um, and enough people say that they don't know you, LinkedIn may prevent you from sending out invitations. So it should be of value for your network. And then um, stay active. Uh, you can update your profile, you can post interesting stuff as your status, you can share information. Um, you can, I, I know a lot of people joining who might have joined FAST would say, I'm so excited to join FAST to the summer when I graduate. Um, they'll stay in contact with us. You can share inf information that's interesting. Maybe you're unemployed right now and you're not going to put unemployed on your headline. You're going to make something really aspirational about what you're looking for and you're going to make the most of this. You're going to um, ask questions, you're going to get advice, you're going to share different articles and tips that you have for your industry so you can get noticed on LinkedIn. And then finally with etiquette, um, this is a, a message my colleague Gina, she really manages our LinkedIn account and she had reached out to a candidate saying that she was, well I'll just read it, she recently reached out to a passive candidate via LinkedIn regarding an implementation consultant internship um, in Finland. He responded to that email with this GIF meme, um, and it was the first time she'd received a GIF as a response to the LinkedIn message. She chuckled, she chuckled and shared it with her team, but she couldn't stop thinking about it. What do you think? Is this too casual? Is this the new norm? Um, how would you respond if a candidate sent you this uh, response to the job opportunity you thought they were qualified for? Um, so we have found with LinkedIn, it, it kind of gets overlapped and sometimes lumped into a social media world. And, um, and it's not, you know, it is a professional location or a professional um, platform and we want to keep it at that. So remember that this is your network and, you know, did this candidate burn a bridge with, with her, with us at, at FAST because of this unprofessional comment, you know, is this reflective of who he is as a person and how he might work with our, can our clients? So remembering that, you know, treating your network professionally and um, responsibly is, is always key with LinkedIn. And then finally, this is just a link or a bunch of links in our handles for social media on how to find more information about FAST or if you're interested in applying, you can find our links on Facebook. And then I will um, include my email address in here as well so you can um, shoot me an email if you're interested. But that is the presentation I have. So we will um, move over to the chat questions. All right, thanks, Sarah. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, if you'll just start typing those in the chat and we can get those answered. It usually takes everybody a minute to start typing. <laughs> All 
I have a question while we're waiting. Um, do you think it's worth it for students to pay for the LinkedIn premium feature? Or do you think that just regular LinkedIn is fine? I personally think LinkedIn regular is just fine. Um, however, if you are unemployed and you are just struggling to find that right fit, it might be worth it to pay for the upgraded service. Um, and I think a lot of times they give you a trial. Uh, so, so give it a try to see if you get anything out of it. But if you've just graduated, I, I would say the regular is fine for now, but it might be con worth considering down the road. Okay, great. All right, looks like we've got a question. Um, when you meet someone in person and then later add them on LinkedIn, is it weird to just add them out of the blue? I would definitely send a message with my connection request, but is it still better to wait to meet them more than once? It depends on the connection that you had with them. If you felt like you really connected and you had an actual conversation, then obviously, as you said, you're gonna put a message and it was great to meet you. I really enjoyed talking to you about whatever you talked about. I think that's completely acceptable. If you just briefly met them and, and said hello and passed a business card and, and really didn't get into a conversation, um, you, you might wanna wait till you actually meet them again and have a little bit more of a conversation. Because I think about how many people I meet and I'm not gonna remember every single person unless we had a meaningful conversation. Um, next question, how would you advise students to reach out to second or third degree connections on LinkedIn? So um, it depends on why you're reaching out to them, uh, what the, the purpose is going to be. If, if it's to get a job, I, I, I don't encourage that. You know, the big thing with networking is not, um, networking takes a long time and networking isn't as simple as just like, hey, you're a connection or a second or third connection, I'd love to get a job. Um, but if it's as simple as you just want to get a little bit more information about an opportunity, then that's completely fine and you can reach out. I think you might have to pay to do that though. I'm not 100% sure. Or if you try to connect with them, you can leave that in your message and then that's free, obviously. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that and just saying, you know, simply, I'm really interested in the position that you have. Um, I would love to hear more information about how you got to that role and to see if you had any advice for me. Um, and people are more than willing to help out that way. But if you're saying like, I want to apply to this job, can you help me? People are most likely going to be shut down and not willing to, to help out. So it's, it's just, there's no problem with doing that. It's just how you approach it and what you're trying to get out of it. Great. Uh, can you tell us how to find a groupie opportunity? I guess they want you to elaborate a little bit more about what you meant by that. Yeah, so there are just a ton of groups out there. There are groups you can join, there's probably a Clemson University group. There are groups on um, uh, certain different uh, organizations, whether it's uh, ACM or SWE or um, any organizations that are out there. There are a ton of different groups that you can join and become part of that conversation. Um, so it's just searching. And I think when you search, um, there are options of, are you searching for a person? Or are you searching for a job, a company, or a group? So you can just search through that and filter correctly, but just start searching for what you're interested in. Um, you might be able to just click groups too. I'm not 100% sure and browse what's out there, but um, they, you can also just join companies or follow companies that you're interested in and post on their page and get involved in that. Yes, and there's definitely um, Clemson alumni groups that um, students can follow, and then there's also a career center. Um, groups. So if you search the Clemson CCPD, we have a private group if any of you would like to join that. All right, looks like we've got two more questions. Uh, if you want to connect with alumni that are with the, oops, sorry, I got one more. Um, if you want to connect with the alumni that are with the company you want to intern or work for, what is a good way to phrase a message so it's more of a conversation instead of asking for a job? Yeah, and, and alumni are honestly such a great place to start from because um, Alumni love helping other alumni out and, and, and you have that kind of common connection. So uh, it, it could be as simple as, um, you know, wherever you're at in the process. Are you just applying? Are you hoping to get more information? Do you actually have an interview with them? Um, a lot of the, the phrasing is just again, going to depend on where you're at. If you're just brand new and you're just interested in the company, it's again, just as simple as reaching out and saying, hey, I'm graduating. I know you graduated in whatever year and you work for whatever company. I'm starting to gather more information and do research on my job opportunities, and this is a company that's always interested me. I hope 
that we could connect. Um, could I take you to coffee or could we connect virtually right now to hear a little bit more about your background and, and any advice that you have for me about applying for this job? Um, but you know, it's just, you never want to say, I want a job and can you help me? Can you push my application through? Instead, it always takes the approach of you want to grow, you want to learn, you want to hear their experiences. Great. So it looks like we've got um, one more question. And then um, really quickly, somebody asked if we would upload this PowerPoint. Um, if Sarah doesn't mind sending it to me, um, yeah. if she's able to share that, I can email it out to you guys with the follow-up email. And then this is also being recorded and it'll be on our um, Career Center YouTube page. So um, you guys can have re that resource both ways. So it looks like we're almost at 1130. So we've got time for one more question. And somebody asked, um, when you were talking about the headline, would it be appropriate to include your vision, which might not directly be related to your major as in a long-term goal? Um, you want to think about what, what you want out of it now. Um, so if your long-term goal is, is completely unrelated, like if you have a few steps to get to your long-term goal, you might not want to put that in your headline now because that's not going to help you to take step one to get to your long-term goal. So, um, you know, it's hard to know what that looks like without knowing the details behind it. Um, but just remember that it, it is kind of the, the here and now. It's what's going to help you right now to get that job and you can always change it. So, you know, hit step one and then um, change it and, and move forward again as well. But I would focus on the shorter term rather than the longer term. Great. So I think that answered all of our questions. Um, if you guys do have any more questions, you can um, email me, just reply to the email um, with the follow-up that I'm going to send later. And I can always send them to Sarah if it's something that um, she can answer better, better than I can. Um, but I just want to thank Sarah for being with us today. Um, that was a great presentation. It's always nice to hear from the employer how you guys are actually, you know, using um, LinkedIn. And then Sarah also put her email on there. So you yes. guys feel free to email her. So um, I'll wait to end it and this presentation for a second, just in case you want to grab her email. Um, but thanks everybody for attending. You can go ahead and start signing off. And thanks again, Sarah. Absolutely. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email and reach out. And I'm happy to, to help or, or, you know, if you have any specific questions about LinkedIn and your profile, I'm, I'm more than happy to walk you through and answer those as well. So just feel free to send me an email. But thank you guys so much. Thanks, Sarah.